Hi, if you're new here, my name is Richard and basically I post videos about Home Assistant, mainly with dashboards, um, automation scripts and any way that you can improve your Home Assistant instance. In this video, I'll be telling you more about how you can add any sort of AI, including Google Generative AI or Llama if you're running on your own hardware or any sort of AI at all to your dashboard, notifications and all sort of things, including text to speech. Why do this video, you may ask? Well, so basically, after using Home Assistant for some time, I realized that with all my automations, if I wanted to receive any um, test to speech or any um, announcements of my speakers on my phone or anything, I had to manually hard code them just to be able to receive the same message every time. And to be honest with you, it gets boring because whenever you get the same message, it's just like, ah, I wish there was something more. So I decided to think outside the box a little bit and figure out ways that I could um, get different messages, but basically have the same message, if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to see it's time to take the trash out every time. I want to add some sort of personality to my home assistant. So the idea came down to then I wanted to use some sort of AI and then be able to add the personality and the entities that I want to, to that AI for that feedback. This is my dashboard for my bedroom. I just hit sleep and it has started. Richard and Megan, good night. Tomorrow, expect a high of 74 degree, low of 44 degree, zero chance of thunderstorms, so no need to build an ark like Noah did with a 0, 0.0 wad, 1% chance. Maybe there will be a good breeze of 5.8 miles per hour. Air quality's good, so fewer fart smells tomorrow, Megan, but that's a joke. See you in the morning. So to be able to achieve what we want to do today, you need to have some sort of generative AI on your home assistant instance. I know some of you run your own hardware, uh, your own like AI on your hardware, like Olama and things like that. I tried that version, but I realized that it's a little bit laggy when I need to, I need it to work the most. So the next best version that I started using was the uh, Google generative AI. And for us, it's free and hundred percent reliable, at least for me and how to get that. When you go to google.com, you can search for Google Generative AI Home Assistant. And then on the first um, link, you click on there and then I'll put this link in the description, but it has everything here. The only thing you need to worry about is you need to come down here and click on the visit AKI keys, uh, AKI keys pages. And when you click on that, it will take you to this page. Make sure you have the right Google account logged in and then you can go ahead and create a new um, API key. So for here, I'll call it home assistant. You can type home assistant in it and then create it. I already created one. That's why it gave me the option to select it. And then I create the key in that project and then make sure you copy the key before you exit out of it. I will go ahead and dismantle this key anyways, or delete it. So you don't have to worry about trying to play with it. Anyways, come back to your home assistant instant and go back to settings devices and services, and then go to the ad integration here, just type Google. And then when you see Google, click on it and then go all the way to Google generative AI, click on that. And then it will ask you for the API key. You can get here a new one here, or you can just paste the one that you have here and hit next. On this page it basically confirmed that it's been accepted. You can add it to a page or um, an area if you want, or for me, I don't add services like you to any area, so I can just skip it. And now we need to test to make sure that it works. The first way we can test it is if you come here and then you click on here, you just hit hello and let's see if you get a feedback. It's working here. Another way you can test it is if you go to developer tools and then you go to the actions and then you go to Google generative AI. And then let's say you can type something along the line of hello. Well, if I can spell hello and then you can perform action and then you can see it's giving you a response here. Creative AI added and working. I will show you how you'll be able to do the dashboard output. So first we need to create some sort of input um, test uh, helper. 
So you go to settings and then you go to uh, devices and services and then you go to help us and then you click create helper and then you can search for test. Yep. And then you click on that. So we're going to call this dashboard. Uh, let's say output. And then you can go ahead and create and save that. So basically you should be able to save a test into this. Or you should be able to have like a test out like I'll put it into this anyways we go back to our home assistant dashboard and then we edit that dashboard and what you want to do is you want to add a markdown card to the dashboard so markdown and then in that markdown card basically you clear this and then you add your um so you add the state of that dashboard. So this will be the code. I will have this also in the, in the GitHub, but basically it will be this and the states using Jenga to pull that information. So this would be uh, the, the, the entity ID. And for you to be able to find that, you can go to developers uh, uh, tools and then get that. So developer to, or you can just go back here to, and then it's just right here. You can just copy that and then paste it and it should work. This added, you realize that whenever we add anything to that Boolean helper, it will show on this screen. So I go ahead and demonstrate it here I go back here. And let's say, let's change this to this is a test. Let me hit enter. And then you go back here in real time. Now you can see this is a test. So now you want to create some sort of automation, which I'll have mine on the uh, on the GitHub. And also I'll show you how my automation is working on my actual home assistant instance. Or home assistant instance. And basically you can see this is basically what is showing right now. I go back to the automation, which mine is stored as dashboard update production. And basically you add um, time and then you use a slash and a five. You can use three, you can use one, which is how many minutes. So if I use five, it will run five minutes of every hour. So every five minutes it's going to run. And then, and that's the trigger. And then for the, um, for the actions, it basically first, it gives, I give you this prompt in my GitHub, but basically I pass this prompt that basically you can see that I have given my entities that it has to read and give me information about in that prompt. So it doesn't have access to all the entities on my system, just the ones that I give it, which is very good and secure. If, for example, if you had a law, a door or anything, and you don't trust an AI to let you back into your house, which is a concern that some people had, but, um, now you can see everything is in here. And sometimes because I'm using input Boolean, I explain what those input Booleans are for so that it will give me a better action. So you'll be able to have this automation. Anyways, I give that prompt to it and then you have to save that prompt. So that like a temporary file, which is mine is like dashboard app. And then basically I pass that dashboard app to that uh, entity that I, I, I created. So, you put, do an input text and then it will copy that text that the AI will bring and then it will put it on that page. So now if, if we run it, it should change. Right. Sometimes when the characters are more than one, uh, 115 or something like that, it doesn't change, but you can see now it changed in real time to, uh, something different, basically making me know that it, it's all quiet on the home front. Your office is the only room dark with motion breaker on. That's because I'm in the office and I turn on the motion breaker. Which of how I use this with mobile um, notification or push notification to my phone is this automation for when everybody leaves the house. Uh, so basically with this automation, it runs when both me and my spouse has been away from the house for more than five minutes, which is when I know we've both been away. And then it also makes sure that guest mode is not turned on. So for example, if there's someone in the house, but we are gone for work, it, it doesn't run. Anyways, it gives basically tens of all the, um, 
the uh, electronics that I have, which is in a script that makes the automations more cleaner. And then it turns off all the lights and everything. And then the most important part is this part. So first, like we did earlier, you generate um, the prompt, right? And then you save the prompt to something else. So I also have this in uh, GitHub, but um, generate the prompt, save the prompt, and then basically you pass the prompt in this um, in this way. You pass it as a test to your phone. So now if I should run this um, um, automation, I'll get a message on my phone, which I will put on the screen. Want to know how you'll be able to use this with a TTX? Basically, um, this is my ninth routine and that's a perfect example of how I use this. And I'll show you a demonstration of that, how this is working. Um, basically I have everything else and then I generate part of the, um, the routine I generate, like I would make sure you are as descriptive as possible with a generation. And then after it generates, like we did before, I store here, here in a, in a, some sort of a, I store it in a variable and then basically I pull that variable with, I'm using chime TTS for this. So I pull this variable through this way. So if I run the automation, everything will run. Uh, and then you will hear the, um, everything on that speaker that you want it to, which is pretty neat. If you want like personalized messages, kind of, um, the automations or the YAML for all of these automation, I'll give you a link to my GitHub. This link will be in the description. Basically this video is the AI and dashboard notification files. And then I'll give you all the automations that I have. For example, this is for the dashboard update. And so I have everything here. You can just go ahead and copy my word in and then you can change certain things to meet your home assistant instance. And then I have my ninth routine. I hold the, I have the whole ninth routine here if you wanted an idea, but the part that you should be worried about mostly is this part and that part where it, it says it through Chime TTS and this is the prompt if that you need. And for the phone notification, I have that example that I showed you here that you should be able to like uh, give it a prompt and then get the prompt and everything here or replace this with your entities. Anyways, uh, if you want to help the channel, you can go ahead and buy me a coffee here. You'll probably be the first person. But anyways, thanks for your time and have a great day. I hope you found some sort of information helpful on this channel. Please subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thank you.